Jorge. Hello, Eric. How are you? I'm pretty okay. I'm pretty okay. I, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> so, just, oh. it's, it's, it's interview marathon, and I um, uh, I try to always keep like five minutes between every interview yeah. just to like, Breathe. you know. <laughs> But uh, the last one went until 30 seconds ago, and I don't like to be late. So, yeah, but, but it's cool. It's, it's cool. okay. How are you? Everything is fine. You know, I have a picture of Vatane right there. You can see it's from Bloodstock. Yeah, I see it. I heard it. Yes. Oh, cool. It, wow, was, amazing. It, it was an amazing show that night at Bloodstock. You know, it was. When, when was that? Was that in, uh, we had played there two times, I think. Was it on the outside stage or in no, the? No, in the, in, in the tent. The, yeah, exactly. when, you, when you had lined the, the Sophie stage. Right. right yeah, exactly. it, you know, it was packed. I, I don't think I ever saw that tent. Maybe only for, I think, was suicidal tendencies. Maybe that was really packed as well. But, yeah. you know, at night, I don't remember seeing so many people in that place. Yeah. And even yeah. and cool. even photographers as well. It was packed. Like, the pit normally is not that crowded. It was fucking amazing experience anyway. So it was... Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, I have good memories from that too, actually. It's, it's, it's a really intense... Uh, intense to play in those kind of tents when they are packed also yeah. with fire and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. And then, you know, let's talk about the um, agony and ecstasy of Vatane. You know, you guys done it again. You know, I don't know what the hell is going on with you guys, but it's a good thing. Whatever is happening, it's good. You guys are surpassing yourselves each record. And, uh, you know, this is another, you know, step forward it's a more diverse vatane record if we can say that it yeah. still has you know like leprous grace for instance which is you know full mayhem you know chaos right. <laughs> that, yeah yeah you know it's dangerous to listen to that song while you're driving because the speed yeah. in the car goes as well <laughs> i know what you mean <laughs> it, it's actually it, it we, it's 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 made out of so, a few uh riffs that we actually just used to like warm up with in the in the rehearsal room before we started working on the on the material each time we met you know we had a few things that we just like warmed up with just to like get a bit of adrenaline going but then towards the end of the recording of the album we we took that material back and we sat down with it one night and like let's let's just make it into a song and i had the lyric and it just came together very nicely. So I'm, yeah, I'm glad that it's there. I'm glad you mentioned it. Also, it's it's kind of a, um, uh, yeah, it's a special song on the album, I think. Yeah, and uh, you know, I was listening to it because you have like uh, Serimosa, which is a more mid tempo. You know, you, you still feel the you know the intensity there. It's more mid tempo, but there's a sense of chaos brewing <laughs> there mm -hmm. that. You know, doesn't really explode. It explodes after you know with Leper's Grace and and all that. But when did you start writing for um for the the new record? Uh, we when the when the pandemic hit in in twenty twenty, I think early twenty twenty or something like that. We we had uh, three concerts left on the on the touring for Trident Wolf Eclipse. And after those, uh, they, they were going to happen during the summer. And then after that, we were, we were all set on just, uh, you know, focusing on new material. So I think I was already at that time, you know, starting to like go into myself a little bit and, 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 you know, start to like open up those parts of myself that I like to have open when, when I, when I'm when I'm going into a creative writing phase, so to say, mm -hmm. uh, so I was already a bit there in my mind, you know, and I was I was already like collecting ideas, and then when the pandemic hit, we were like, perfect, now let's just do it, you know. So we we were pretty keen to to get started. So it was I guess it was around that time, and we we worked in a way that we I, I mean I write all the music. <clears throat> myself and i write all the lyrics but i i bring it to the rehearsal room and then we had 
for the first time a complete lineup for those sessions you know with with a live lineup that we have been using now for quite many years now uh, so that was cool that was like a new new experience we were rehearsing the songs a lot and by the end to, to, like three weeks before we were going into the studio we had a complete demo re, like a rehearsal demo recorded with with all the with all the songs except leopard's grace yeah and uh you know i, I was ringing that you guys recorded live in the studio it, yeah. it, it's a common thing with you guys i wasn't aware of of that no no it's it's the first time we did it And, and I think it came from uh, the, what I was just saying about uh, this being also the first time that we that we rehearse new material with a full lineup. So when we after we had done those rehearsal demos and we had about three weeks left to the to entering the studio, we just said that like, but there is no reason to to do this any other way. I mean, it's we we have rehearsed so much. Everyone is kind of in the same, you know mind space when it comes to the songs we had we were talking a lot about the songs together we were talking about you know what they should convey what we're trying to express how we should play them and so on so so we we were just like let's let's just mic everything up at the same time and 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 uh, we, we had to do it of course with headphones but but uh we were standing in this huge room it's an old church that the, that the old that the studio is built in it's an old church so so the the recording room is is, is a giant old church hall and we 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 spent the two first days in the studio just um, like decorating the place and uh and uh, we brought most of the stuff that we have on stage uh, like altars and and the fireballs and and uh, yeah things that things that we just wanted there to to have, to be in an inspiring environment and to just yeah to 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 feel that we were at the in a in a proper space you know yeah, yeah because I, I, should... I, i wouldn't imagine you guys recording with plenty of full light and you know bright <laughs> bright space yeah. I, i don't think it makes sense when you're when you're doing that kind of music to have that as much light. no uh, i don't think it i don't think it makes sense for any metal band to do it like that you know do you know yeah. what i mean it's like i i, I uh, i'm i'm surprised that that bands don't put more focus on on that part because it's it's not a it, it's not a really big thing to just take one day and decorate the studio yeah. and bring uh, you know your flags and your the things that makes you a tribe as a band you know and just make it your own place i think it's super important I mean, why not? Why yeah. not? You know, it, it doesn't hurt, right? So. No, and I think it creates like a kind of a mood. I, I think I find that inspiring. It's just like your house or, or something like that. You want to have it something that you identify with, something yeah. that when you when you get home, you feel like this is home. It's not office. It's not someone yeah. else's house. No, it's my place, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's one thing when it comes to like mixing, for example, then it can be maybe a little bit more sterile and you can be a bit more just focused on what you're doing. But when it comes to such a like organic thing as to perform music and especially performing music together, I think it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, Yeah, for, for me, it's just a very natural thing to take into consideration, you know, what you're surrounded with. So, so we drew like a, a huge pentagram over the entire floor of the church. It was like five meters uh, wide. And then, you know, a pentagram has five uh, wings. Yeah. So we put the drummer in one of the wings and then we had one, one each, you know. And then the, the pentagram is, is a symbol of of energy flow, you know, between the elements, uh, earth, fire, air, water, and spirit. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, it, 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 you know, all these kind of things, I believe as a, as a spiritual person, I believe that all of these things have an impact on, 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 on what you can hear on the album. Yeah. You know, it, it would have sounded way different if we would have done it in just a, a regular studio, tracking the instrument one by one I, i i really believe that then it's up to everyone to believe what they want but, yeah. but to me it's, to me it's like that and uh, does it make sense for you you know 
performing the album live in the studio, does it make sense, you know, to play it, the whole thing live on stage as well? Are you planning that? Do you think it makes sense? Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, I I think it's I think it's a cool idea. You know, we and, uh, when when we had completed the recording, we we didn't want to take a break from from playing. So so we we went we just drove everything back to the rehearsal place, and then we just continued rehearsing a, a few days a week, and then we we played the whole album still you know it, we just continued playing those songs and because then we had the final recordings that we could kind of you know uh, direct ourselves after so so we have we have it rehearsed it sounds fucking great it would make sense to play it all in a row but at the same time as soon as we started playing you know an old song like storm of the antichrist or reaping death or something like that It was just like, you know, so, so I don't know. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's very cool to have seven albums of songs to shoot from. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, an album, I think this album is special in the sense that, um, you, there's a lot of, you know, it's like a, a journey, you know, why it mm -hmm. takes you yeah, up, like that, down, too. you know, it's very, you know, it's very easy to, listen to it in one go it's not just one of those records that you know after half an hour you're like okay i need i need to breathe <laughs> no, i need to get yeah. some air or anything yeah. like that this album you have that space as well you know to breathe so you know in my head when i was listening to it i think this, this is like the perfect record to play live from start to finish anyway <laughs> yeah but 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 uh we i think the dynamics of the record is cool you know i i i, I like to uh work with that and experiment with, with that of course you can you can you, you can really change the order of songs around until yeah. you get mad you know but but we were this one was quite easy to just get everything in in a in a way that made sense and i i like the word you're using this journey i i think i i also look at it a bit that way yeah uh, there, there's this instrumental song in the middle called not son no man or god which is just as a, a kind of one minute interlude with a with a guitar melody and and uh, i see that as like a chance for a pilgrim to sit down and take off the, the backpack and uh, place the, the walking stick beside you and then just sit and think a bit about where you have gone and where you're going yeah. you know i like to have this in the middle of the of the journey so yeah. to say yeah it's uh you, you know i absolutely you know i since uh, since wild hunt you know i've been a f you know fan of attain and while i was listening to the agony and ecstasy i was just like you know this is fucking good you know and Thank because you so be, much, be, because we like with a song like we remain you know when you have uh farida there you know starting with her voice which you know i was like are the fans like the hardcore fans going to think they're listening to the same band but yeah. and I think it was such a risk to take, but I think the reward when you listen to to it, it's fucking immense, to be honest, you know? And uh, I, I, when you were writing like that song, We Remain, uh, did you have thoughts you know, in the head like what the fans, the hardcore ones might think? Uh, I have to say that like after we did The Wild Hunt, Uh, which had a song like They Rode On, for example. I I think I stopped thinking a lot about these kind of things, you know, because I I think it's so important as an artist who is going to do something for a long time. We have done Watain for almost 25 years. And if you're going to do that, you have to have a honest communication with yourself. You know, you, you cannot... <sighs> you cannot start asking yourself too much what other people are going to think and so on. It, it's, it's dangerous to do that. Yeah. It, it's, it, it cannot lead to anything good. I think, uh, I think the, the best way to go is, 
is to find a very genuine place within yourself and express it. That that's the that's the greatest uh, and and most respectful gift you can yeah. give to the listeners as well. I think and and uh, so I don't know. Plus, I mean, I I I think I thought maybe the other way around. I think that this is a pretty fucking cool thing yeah. to, <laughs> to to have on an album. And and if I would listen to this album, I would I would think it was fantastic. You know. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, that was, I think, my my sentiments a bit more. But I, I Farida, Farida's voice for me is is magical, yeah. and and it's uh, uh, it has like a, it it has a thing to it that is that is not really of this world. I, yeah, at least to to my head, it's 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 something. You know, to me, she is not like a contemporary like rock metal singer. I think I think of it more like you know Edith Piaf or yeah. Nina Simone or, or something like that. You know, a really classic uh, female voice. You know, and and uh, to have that in this kind of context, I mean, it's it's a dream to be able to to experiment with that kind of stuff as yeah. a musician. Yeah, and like when you're honest with yourself, I think the fans will understand that anyway. You know, I think so, and 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 I mean, myself as 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 a great lover of music, and as I have my record collection is huge, you know, and I follow bands that I like, and I check out their new releases, and if it's one thing that I can get disappointed with is when I feel that a band hasn't really been honest with themselves so when they feel a little bit like uninspired maybe or i mean of course you can that that can happen it, yeah. it's not a very uncommon thing it actually i guess it happens to most bands but but i really like when it's not like that <laughs> and 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 i uh, and i love to uh cling to that idea yeah. as an artist you know I, i i love to cultivate the idea of 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 staying passionate and, and staying honest and so on i i think it's it's something that vatain as a band um encourages yeah and because i was listening to we remain and you know that start brought me to you know i'm a fan of battery the Hammerheart record and you know that one yeah. that and I just got that slight vibe in the beginning of that you know like yeah. listen to one yeah. road to Azabai or something like that you know yeah. I was listening to that and, and I, for us there was a second there and I was thinking Bathory for yeah. whatever reason <laughs> you know yeah. I know you're yeah. a huge fan yeah. you know but no, but but of course it's it's a, it's a very It's a homage, in a way, you know, to yeah. to to that to that style, in a way. I, I and I think what what Corson did on those records is so unique in the sense that he he created music that was so. It didn't have so much to do with like arrangements or 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 certain melodies. It had to do with feeling and yeah. emotion. He he just. He just It, it's all it's almost like cinematic you know yeah I, i i get very clear like pictures in my head when i listen to hammerheart yeah uh, and um like almost like movie kind of scenes or something you know yeah uh, and and i i haven't really i mean of course there are other bands that have a similar kind of expression or a similar way of working with music but but i think when it comes to to like heavy metal i i, I think uh, that that style is, is still so unique yeah and and i i i i can't resist to to uh, to experiment with that sometimes yeah. I, i think it's, it can be really cool to yeah you know, you know for me those those records you know especially hammerheart you know it's like like you were saying it's like i listen to it and i can picture what's happening some you know i can you know imagine scenes happening in those songs yeah. and yeah. you know and it's you, you can have like those you know whatever symphonic bands that have you know a lot of you know music you know that can create the environment and everything but 
that mm. record i think it's it's more personal in a way that um yeah. it's like something like blues music in a way that it's very yeah. it, it really moves your soul somehow and yeah. you, you can imagine you know what's happening and i think with my heart that was the thing listen to that music you know it's just picture a journey uh, you know yeah. travel scenes happening you know it was yeah very special what, 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 let, let me, what, what age are you i'm 46 so, so were you were you there when in portugal when Corson did this uh, hammerheart promo tours no i wasn't i know my i know friends that went th to that yeah, you know yeah, same here i have friends that uh, they were there and i can see when i see the videos i i recognize the faces yeah yeah but, i bet yeah of but course. but i couldn't i i couldn't have gone there because i had school or some whatever yeah, yeah, you know yeah, exactly. my my dad wouldn't let me get out that easily yeah. anyway yeah, fair enough. <laughs> you know I, i i would try i would you know only when i was really 18 that's when my dad decided like you say like you can you know yeah. do whatever but you still need to be wild, yeah. yeah but you still need to be on time at home and stuff like that yeah. you know but uh, anyway and you guys announced a tour which you know i absolutely drooled all over <laughs> it with a bath and um, oh, yeah, yeah. the and tour tribulation. yeah and tribul i was like you know it doesn't get much better than um this lineup for bands it's a strong package it's, it's a, a strong package for sure and is this going to be probably the biggest tour you know as far as stage and you know places where you're going to play in a way because i think in portugal you're going to play a quite big room it's very big in portugal right yeah in lisbon yeah, yeah. i saw that it's like two two thousand plus capacity yeah something. it is it is a big room yeah we'll see how that goes i don't know i'm not the one who's deciding the venues but but uh Yeah, it's it's definitely the biggest headline tour that we have done. We've we've done a few big tours with like Celtic Frost and Creator and uh, and bands like that, where we played a lot of the the bigger stages in Europe around 2,000 capacities. But it's the first headline tour in that size, so that's cool. So like after I'm done with the with the interviews for today, uh, I'm going over to uh, to our guitarist's place. We we all live very close to each other now out in the woods outside of our hometown so I'm, i'm going over there and we are we are right now working on the on the stage uh, elements for uh, for this tour but uh, we have to start now because otherwise we will not be ready in time for october <laughs> that's how that's how uh, ambitious those ideas are and then we probably have to arrange some kind of a tank or something to carry the weight but we'll, we'll see one thing at a time <laughs> i'm sure you'll find the uh, you know the space are, are you planning a you know normally you know the stage with uh, with vatain is always very full with them um, you know with the altar with the fire and everything mm -hmm. are you planning going a bit bigger <laughs> i don't know so yeah i think so yeah i think it'll be yeah it's it's it's, it's bigger It, it's bigger it's it's higher it's a lot of, it's a lot taller yeah. than, than anything we've ever done before uh it's it's a it's a pretty it's it's a, it's a logistically it's a, it's a very <laughs> stupid idea that we have but but, but it, it will be magnificent and it will it will really serve its purpose if we get it right you know the vatain stage is is uh, designed to to arouse people's imagination and and uh, to create a kind of ecstatic experience yeah. you know like a almost religious experience i've always been fascinated with this uh, with, with the concert setting in general i think it's a very you know it i guess it's existed since the 60s or something like that so like about 60 years now that there has been like concerts like rock concerts with a lot yeah. of people looking at a band that is doing something on a stage but i think what we are doing is is uh, uh we, we are still experimenting with that and kind of uh, elaborating on that idea uh, i i am taking a lot of spiritual elements into it and and having it become a mix between a, a ceremony and and a rock concert uh which is yeah i mean 
it, it, it's a it's an interesting line of work yeah. uh, with with a lot of with a lot of uh, great creative moments and and also spiritually empowering moments i would say yeah you, you think and you agree with that probably that the best way to experience vatain is live on stage not on a video format not with cell phones it just yeah you know because well, you guys played vagos as well and you know I, yeah. I i wouldn't bother taking the cell phone even to take a freaking picture you know i took pictures obviously because i'm a photographer so i did my share yeah. in the first three songs and you know that was it but you no know, normally you tend to be tempted to take the phone and take a picture i didn't bother sure. with that because i think it's you know it's it's a religious it's a very intense experience to watch the live. life <laughs> It, it, it can be it, it i think it can be if you open up for it and if you if you if you approach it that way i think it can really be a different kind of experience but you know it, it's up to everyone sometimes i mean i know how it's like to go to a concert and just just want to see a show sometimes yeah. it is like that yeah. and and I, i you know i don't i'm not going to tell anyone how to how to behave on a on a show it's it's everyone's right to decide but uh But if they really want the full experience, I would say put down the phone, open yourself up, take a few deep breaths, and, and go with and it. Let it, let, let it consume you. Yeah, you know? it's a, it's hey, a, uh, shooting you guys on stage is it, it's again like the live show. It's very special. It's something very special to do. So um, you know, I'll see you there all right absolutely all, all right, right. Cool. thank hey, you very thanks much for a really nice interview all right thank you very much have a great day all right i'll see you soon Cheers.